Hi, everyone. Good hey, afternoon. Everyone. Good evening. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> I always feel like this time of year, I start saying good evening, like after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, at least it's not dark right now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Creeping into some more daylight. It's getting better. We could just get it warmed up. Let's um, let's give a few more minutes for additional people to pop in, um, and then we will get started, so folks can get on with their evening. Hi, Susan. Hi there. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. It's been a while. Oh. I hey, loved your Susan. heart. Thank you. Hey, Lisa. Kyle, I know you have somewhere to be at 6.30. Another Zoom session. Zoom, you just can't get enough of this stuff, can oh, you? Oh yeah, till 10 p.m. Oh, that is rough. Yeah. Yeah. And I was on Zoom at 9 a.m. this morning, so it's been a full Zoom day. Nobody call me tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not answering. Well, oh, I went outside to... today to deliver my heart for the parade of hearts. How uh -huh. exciting. Cold. We should have done it yesterday. Yeah, I was just going to say yesterday would have been a better day for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was bitter. Yeah. Are you delivering them like back to dimensional innovations or? Yeah, mine. I brought mine back there, which is good because that's like 15 minutes. Well, without the heart on the back. But that was a nail biting 15 minutes this time. So. Oh but um it, it should have been the last day so all of your friends who have hearts they they've gotten put in now so. awesome but it's, it's going to be a few weeks till we see them out on the streets right right um i don't know the exact date but um march 4th there's a um a presentation to the different people the different organizations who are looking at them to, and so I don't know where they'll be yet. And I don't right. know if after that is when they make their final decisions about where they'll be. But yeah, so it should be like, I think mid-March through three months. Yeah, so cool. be lots, lots of neat ones. I saw some of them in the, um, in the, in the warehouse where I put mine. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's so neat to see the other ones, so. Was mine shrink wrapped? Um, which one was? Which one was yours? Where are you? Susan, is that you? Yes. Um, yeah. I'm trying to keep crap from falling over on my desk. <laughs> um, mine was the one that's covered with cloth. I did not see that one. So it might be that that's already been shrink wrapped and put back. So okay. there were only five that I saw. So. Okay. I'm okay. joking. I hope it isn't shrink wrapped. They just told oh, me okay. they couldn't clear coat it the regular way. So they were going to do something else with it. So. Okay. Yeah. I could well, that's amazing. I, I, I loved watching your progress. I mean, it's just amazing to see. Oh, and by the way, I'm working on my quilt that I've had for a year and still working on. So maybe you could come help me with my quilt. <laughs> actually, actually, if you just do it sort of blindly without thought, it's a whole lot easier. Yeah. You know, just well, I hope they uh, stuff on the desk and sort it out. So I hope they take a photograph like of all the hearts lined up together. I wonder mm -hmm. if that's yeah. part of their deal. So, yeah. well, it is 5.35. Um, what do you yes. say we get started? Let's get started. Um, so I'm going to kick things off. My name is Donna Mandelbaum. I am the Communications and Marketing Director for the Kansas City Streetcar Authority. I'm also a board member um, for Art in a Loop. Um, foundation and the streetcar has been involved with Art in the Loop. We just said this the other day. This is our seventh year wow. together. I will say eight. Eight. 
time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Yeah, so we started in 2016, the day, uh, the same year that the streetcar opened, we decided why not partner with Art in a Loop um, to bring public art to the streetcar line. Um, it's a wonderful program and we are so happy to be a partner, a collaborate, collaborator and a sponsor of this. So I wanna welcome you all here. Thank you so much for uh, taking your time out to learn more about Art in the Loop and specifically the 2022 uh, program. Um, so we have myself, we have Kyle Mullins, who is our art director for Art in the Loop this year. He was also our art director last, last year. And so we're super excited that he's working with us again. And we have our fearless leader, Anne Holiday. She is program mm -hmm. director for Art in the Loop as well as um, vice president for downtown council. Um, so we're here to explain what the program is for this year. Most of this is going to be handled by Anne and Kyle, but um, for those that are part of the program, you'll be working very closely with us at the Streetcar Authority. So I uh, just want to make sure you knew who I was. Anne is up next. Great. Thank you, Donna. Um, I am pleased to just give you a quick overview about um, what Art in the Loop is and you know, what we do and why we do it. Um, our mission is to provide opportunities for local artists to gain experiences in creating and performing public art. Um, while we also uh, hope to infuse the heart of downtown Kansas City with innovating, innovative and engaging art for employees, residents, and visitors. So we're trying to look at this program from both the artist's perspective and the audience's perspective. Um, we do value an equitable, diverse, and inclusive art community. And I know when you, um, if you decide to apply to Art in, this loop, art in the Loop this year, you'll find we do ask some uh, demographic questions and that's to help us um, figure out if we're reaching our goals. Um, you also heard Donna say that um, I uh, am a vice president of the Downtown Council, which is a business organization that's um, promoting a, a vibrant, inclusive, and equitable downtown. And, and this is sort of the arts part of the Downtown Council. And that's where I'm actually a staff person there. Um, we are a private charitable organization where we partner with the city and, and other organizations, but we are not a public. And then sometimes I like to tell people, why, why art in the loop? Well, when we were formed in 2004, the idea was that uh, part of the concept was a need, I thought there was a need for more current um, public art within the center of downtown where the high rises are within the downtown loop. Um, so that is where the name came from, but we, we were growing the size of our loop <laughs> to, the greater downtown area as we partner with um, Casey's Streetcar. Um, and if you look up here, you see some of just some snaps of um, projects that we have done in the past. Today, we're gonna talk about our visual art um, call for artists. We are expecting to put out a performing arts call for artists um, later in the year. Um, although we do have social practice um, and engagement in this one as well. And I. I don't know if she's going to come back to her screen, but I did want to take the opportunity to let you know that our board chair is also here with us, um, Kathy Smith. So she she come back. We might want to give her give her a shout out. So now I'm going to turn it over to Kyle. Um, Kyle's been great um, directing hi, the Anne. program. There's Kathy. There's our board chair. Everybody say hi. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Glad to have you with us. Hi, guys. I'm just making some soup. I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> it's a good soup day. Perfect. It is a good soup day. Yeah. Um, thank you. So Kyle will will kind of take the reins from here. It, it's been great having Kyle involved. His background is actually um, dance. Um, so so he's bringing kind of an, an entirely different perspective to the program, which is which has been really great. So Kyle, take it away. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, so we're just going to provide a, a, a presentation that will sort of outline the um, call for visual artists that went live, what, one week ago now? Two weeks? Time has lost meaning for me, I guess, these last few years. Um, so <laughs> each year um, we have a theme or a prompt for artists to use 
um, when approaching their proposals. This year for 2022, we have landed on the word sustainable. And we're offering a few questions for artists to think about when they're um, putting together their proposal. How do you define sustainability? What are the intersections between public art and sustainability? What does a sustainable downtown Kansas City look like? How does sustainability impact your artwork, your art practice, your community, and your city? How can you incorporate sustainable materials, processes, et cetera, et cetera into your practice and design? How can public art intersect with social practice and how can public art encourage sustainability? Of course, um, we would definitely encourage um, all applying artists to you know, expand this thinking as much as feels right for you, your practice and your projects. But these are some questions for you to get started. Um, we're looking for artists to respond to these questions and explore their vision of sustainability within their proposals. So this year we have three opportunities for visual artists. The first, or I guess A, is the Kansas City Streetcar Wrap. That's a whole streetcar that gets wrapped in your artwork, potentially. Um, the second is the Kansas City Streetcar Stop within the frame. So you can, you can see in the image here, sort of the glass, not sort of, the glass panels on the streetcar shelters will be covered in um, visual art. And we also have uh, option C, the Kansas City Streetcar Stop outside the frame and beyond, which is, I just love that call to adventure there, um, looking at sort of three-dimensional work that can exist. We'll, we'll get into specifics, but sort of around the shelter or social practice, community engagement type projects as well. So first we have the Kansas City Streetcar Wrap. We'll be selecting one artist for this opportunity and that one artist will be invited to wrap one Kansas City streetcar vehicle. You can see demonstrated beautifully here. Um, this is from our 2021 exhibition. This is by an artist named Hector Garcia called Jazz, the Resilient Spirit of Kansas City. Um, and you can see that his design really is um, wrapping the entirety of that streetcar. Um, so that selected artist will be paid a fee of $2,500 to create a print ready file of that artwork. And then Art in the Loop um, handles the printing, installation and the removal of that artwork. And, and we'll work with that artist to sort of get that file to where it needs to be. The artist will interact with the printer and um, you know, that there's a lot to learn about vinyl and um, <laughs> vinyl installation, et cetera, as we move through these. So um, it's an educational opportunity for you as well. A few um, examples of previous year streetcar wraps. The first was 2018, the first streetcar wrap, the Amy Kligman's car, um, party car by Amy over on the left. And you can see a little um, close up of the detail of the work. Um, and over on the right, we have Macrocosmos Caterpillar Monarch um, by Christina Barilos and Amanda Gahan in 2019. Um, and you can kind of see throughout the years, and, and Anne and Donna can tell you a little bit more that the artwork kind of keeps creeping into of the car. And you can really see that um, 2020s wrap, Hope and Gratitude by Ada Koch and Glenn North. I um, mean, you can see within this artwork that the poppies on that vinyl sort of creeping on just a little bit into the glass of the windows. There's a little bit of that vinyl that was installed onto one of the seats. There may be a few of the seats within the car and then um, a sign um, in the car as well. Now, there are limitations to this, of course, for public safety, um, but but that kind of organic shape to the vinyl um, is a possibility. Um, small percentage of the space. And that's actually a perforated vinyl. You can kind of tell in the image, you can kind of see through it. Um, any of the, the vinyl that goes over the glass has to be um, still able to see through. The second opportunity is the Kansas City Streetcar Stop within the frame. Again, that's the artwork that's installed onto the glass panels at the KC Streetcar shelters. We'll be selecting six to eight artists this year. And these are all two-dimensional work. So this is visual artwork that's printed on, uh, there's a few different types of vinyl, but we would um, work with you to sort of select the right type with the right opacity, transparency, et cetera. 
Um, and those that artwork gets um, installed onto those glass panes, as I said. And there's two different sizes for this. There's a smaller streetcar shelter, and those are about 59 inches by 84 inches. Um, you can see the exact dimensions here on the screen. And then there's a larger streetcar shelter, which is um, 167 inches across and then about 61 inches tall. Again, um, looking at public safety, um, we have to have um, a level of transparency within all of these artwork so that folks can see through the glass at the streetcar shelter. Um, so depending on um, the artwork itself, um, like basically the more coverage the artwork takes on the glass, the more transparency is necessary within the artwork. But these artworks can also take organic shapes. Um, as you'll see in some of the examples, not everything's just like a perfect rectangle that fits within the glass pane. <clears throat> um, these artists are paid a artist fee of $600. And uh, Art in the Loop pays for the printing, the installation and the removal of the artwork. So our first example, this was from last year. This is Sacred Spaces by Alison Bowman. And this is a really lovely example of um, transparency and how it can be utilized within the artwork. Um, this work specifically is so stunning when the light sort of shines through it, it almost creates this stained glass effect. Um, and something to note is that Alison also created um, a meditation experience that um, folks riding the streetcar, passersby could scan on their phone and it would bring up um, sort of a meditation that would go along with this. So there's, there's opportunities to sort of think outside of the box as we move through this. Next up, we have uh, Love and Be Loved by Kat Katrina Revenaugh. This again is from last year's exhibition. Um, and on this slide, you can see on the bottom right hand corner, that's Katrina's um, proposal. And you can see that that white space became clear space. And as all everything in color became um, that sort of translucent, really beautiful stained glass effect again. Next up, we have Patchwork by Shelly Pinto. You see this looks pretty different. Um, there's much more opacity within this artwork, but you can see the clear border that we um, left around the artwork and that helped to account for that level of transparency that we needed. Next up we have Resilient Encoded by Robert Castillo. Um, I love um, the way that this artist used the um, cutout of the vinyl to create part of the work. Right, to spell out the, the word resilient there. And you can see there's a really can accomplish a pretty good level of detail. Um, so all of the little writing in the background, that's all, um, oh, I'm gonna forget what it's called, like RNA or DNA or something of um, COVID-19, sort of all of the DNA sequence um, on the background there. You can sort of see some of that again within um, the proposal file that's down on the right. Next up, we have Beauty in the Small Things by Megan Leong. And you can't quite tell in this photo, but this actually has two different types of vinyl. So the innermost panels with the deer are um, more opaque and the outer two panels have a greater level of transparency. Is that correct? Am I remembering that right? It's the center that was more opaque. <clears throat> And interestingly, Megan took two different artworks, sort of cut them together to create this piece. Next, we had Silver Lining by Brittany Noriega. And this was actually um, a graphite work um, that she photographed and used that as the um, print ready file. So there's different options, right? You can create a digital file or you can take an existing artwork or something that you created for this and get a high level um, image of it. And that can work as well. So you can see those side by side here. And again, you can see this a little bit more of a sort of a cloudy um, opacity to it, but the light still really shines through and works with the, um, especially all the detail from the graphite. Here's an example of a smaller shelter. Um, we Under One Sun, One Moon, and On One Earth by Smitha George. Um, I think this is a really nice example of how, again, light plays with color. Uh, 
This was Beyond the Looking Glass by William Dubois. Du Bois. I'm already forgetting how we say it. How fancy do we get? Um, William created something that was interactive, which we love. <laughs> um, he was sort of bringing our Zoom spaces into the real world and creating opportunities for folks so you could, uh, to interact with the artwork. And you can see the um, opacity versus transparency versus completely see-through elements here on this design. And one thing I wanted to note, especially, I'm just gonna go back really quickly. Some of these artworks, we definitely recommend like taking a look at where these streetcar shelters are located, sort of get an idea for the peripheral, the periphery around the area, how light interacts with the shelters and thinking about your designs. And last up, we had a, um, a streetcar shelter by Angie Jennings, Love Who You Love. And that brings us into our third opportunity outside the frame and beyond. Um, and this is sort of our much broader category this year. Um, and so we're looking for artists to propose two-dimensional, three-dimensional installation or interactive artworks. Um, these are works that can be applied to the glass on the roof for the concrete wall that's near the shelters, potentially on sidewalks. Um, all of this would have all of the work has levels of approval that they need to go through, but this um, particular part of the call would need a, a we'd work with you on it, but um, dream big and then we'll figure out how to make it work. And we're also looking for proposals that are based in social practice or community engagement. Um, social practice for the purposes of this sort of defining as artwork that engages the public or the community directly. And then that collaborative aspect of creating the work is sort of equally important to the final work itself. Um, so for this category, we'll, we're asking artists to submit a budget that's outlining all of the costs that to create, install, and remove the work for this call, um, opportunity, just for the outside the frame and beyond. Art in the Loop will not be installing and removing the artwork. This will be um, up to the artist. They also be asked for a description of the project, um, including any media or materials that you'll be using, how it connects to the theme, um, some thoughts about preferred locations, and how it would be installed, executed, um, and re removed, etc. And for this opportunity, um, the artist will be paid a fee of two thousand five hundred dollars. And we have some examples of artwork that would fall into this category from years past. And some of these were before my tenure here with Art in the Loop. So I'd love if, if you don't mind, Anne and Donna kind of telling us a little bit about some of these works. Well, I'd be happy to, Kyle okay. and Donna, please jump <laughs> in. Um, this piece was from 2016. Um, that inaugural year, I guess, was called Sound Shapes Connecting the Dots by Shannon and Darren White. And, and as you can see, it's, um, it's tubes and then these um, discs that you could press. And when you press them, uh, different lights and sounds would come on, um, you know, would light up those, the different tubes. And then we were able to figure out how to connect this to the electricity at the stop. Um, and I think it's a great, you know, showing the kind of engaging artwork. Um, I guess I need you to change the slides. Kyle, thank you. This was another example of rail bike rail by the Minister of Information, uh, where we in installed the bicycle uh, as a sculpture that, and then people got on and rode it. And as they rode it, it powered a, an iPad that ran a video explaining how to ride your bike safely near the streetcar line. Um, so this is to show you, you know, that we can, you know, we can install sculptural elements near the streetcar stop. Next slide. Um, Don't Wait, Get Lost by Shelby Burchett from 2017. This was, um, this had a, an element that stayed up the whole time, like for the three or four months, which were the, was the vinyl up to the streetcar um, shelter. But then she held a series of events throughout the, um, the summer where she brought in the, these different elements for people to touch and, and feel and, and, and different materials. You can see the, the furry uh, seats there. We're not, we're not there every day. They were just there uh, for the events. 
So next slide, please. Then and now the faces of KC by Lauren Thompson. In this case, the artist installed um, this fence and then she photographed the, the folks you see across the top representing current day different um, arts fields. Then on the on the reverse, she did historic um, folks. And then she literally, you know, had them printed, cut the vinyl, applied them to each piece of the uh, fence um, there. So that's we and we definitely in that case, you know, she had to go and, and get approval from the city for the ADA safety and things like that. And that's all we, you know, we help you with that part with any sort of approvals or coordination that needs to take place with the city or property owners. And Next Anne time. and Donna know everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Run the Town, a Civic Trail by Sarah Starr was uh, another piece she installed. She created a run that took that would take you through different sites in downtown Kansas City. The map was on one of the streetcar shelters and then she collaborated with another artist who drew these, these did these area, these uh, three, well, goodness, you can tell it's getting later in the day. I don't know how you're gonna last till 10, Kyle. She would do these illustrations that marked, that were the routes throughout downtown. Um, so that, again, those were up the entire um, exhibition. And then she had, I think, at least two runs that were planned uh, where we all went out and ran or, or walked the route. So next slide. Casey Word Plays by Allison Lundberg and Chris Young Miller. Um, that was a great collaboration, um, actually, because I think Allison was coming more out of a writing background and Chris more of an artist. So they worked together to kind of to create this new word game that uh, was installed at one of the streetcar stops. And as you can see, they they had a box of um, of rubber bands that you use to mark out the words. And then the words all related to, I think, downtown, like destinations on the streetcar stop. And you might notice with the white tubes and whatnot, it, it was quite a um, collaboration to figure out how to install this piece. Um, and it did end up coming down a little early uh, because we didn't realize how windy that particular location was. Um, and the, the sign couldn't quite withstand enough wind. So that's just to give you a little idea of the different things that can happen. The pitfalls of putting art out in the world. Um, all right, so let's look a little bit at the application guidelines. Um, this application, sorry, my cat has decided it's time to talk to us all. Um, these are all the calls up on the website. Um, actually, if someone wouldn't mind dropping the link to the Art in the Loop website in the chat. Um, so we do encourage any sort of partnerships that you may envision that would um, sort of go along with your artwork with local nonprofit organizations or businesses that would help sort of expand the impact of the project. To be eligible to apply, you, could, you must be a professional visual artist or artist team or art student, at least 18 years of age, and you must reside within 50 miles of Kansas City. And then through this application um, process, we will convene a panel of um, arts, local arts professionals, and then also folks that are related to the downtown Kansas City community to look through all these proposals and make final decisions. Criteria that we'll be looking at, um, the artwork um, can range from sort of temporary to semi-permanent. Um, I think there's someone on this call whose artwork is very semi-permanent, Sharon Smith's artwork up on our art wall. I think Sharon was here. Um, we're looking for work that is surprising, unconventional, thoughtful, fun, definitely works that engage the public, um, particularly as we're opening up projects to that sort of um, social practice work this year, um, encouraging community engagement and interaction, as we said, appropriate, must be appropriate for all ages, nothing polemic or polarizing. We're looking for art to respond to the theme of sustainability. And we're looking for original concepts and, of course, the aesthetic strength of your proposal. Um, 
experience that you know pr proven experience working within the medium that you're working within and then you know the resume things that we'll look at education training awards etc so all of these as, as i said earlier um, we do collaborate with property owners so that includes um, kansas city streetcar and donna mandelbaum um, the city and any of adjacent businesses so we work with all of them um, the installation and removal of all of the two-dimensional work, so the vinyl um, on the streetcar shelters as well as on the streetcar um, is scheduled to be installed and removed by Art in the Loop. And then um, that third category, three-dimensional or interactive community engagement works, um, we'll coordinate that removal and installation with you and then as well as with um, the property owners. And then um, at the end of the process, you'll be asked, um, any selected artists will be asked to write a brief final report, sort of similar to any grant opportunity. So what selected artists will provide is just any descriptive material um, and images that we'll use for the website and marketing. Um, we'll ask you for an impact statement. Your attendance will be um, required at our kickoff event. We'll look at a calendar um, of dates a little bit in a few slides um, and a closing reception. We also schedule art walks. We'll take um, sort of the public on a guided tour of all of the artworks. It's a really fun event. And it's an opportunity to sort of connect with the public and, and sort of talk with them about your work. Um, and then any three-dimensional work, again, will be removed um, by the artist in coordination with us and property owners. And then what we provide is web presence for your project. Um, social media, PR, marketing, we'll um, create signage for all of the installations. Um, of course, any logistical support, like Anne was saying, if you need any sort of permissions or approvals that will help you so we'll sort of facilitate that process. Um, curatorial support from us. Um, we'll create a beautiful um, printed catalog of all of the artwork created for the 2022 um, exhibition. And then um, for any of the vinyl work, the two-dimensional works, we will remove. Little schedule, March 7th is when the applications close. I just realized today that March is next week, which is kind of blowing my mind a little bit. And later in March, we'll convene our selection panel, start making those um, decisions. April, we'll sign contracts. And then in May and June, all the artworks will start the installation process. Um, sometime later in June, we'll have our kickoff event, art walk throughout the summer, um, a closing reception tentatively scheduled November 8th, and then November, late November, we'll start the removal of all the artworks. To apply, you can visit our beautiful website, artintheloop.com. And on that opportunities, click on opportunities, and that's where you'll see that call located. And if you need to connect with us, there's lots of ways to do so. Um, my email address along with Ann and Donna's is at the bottom here. And of course our website, our social media. Now's my time to ask you, do you have any questions? <laughs> I'm actually gonna stop. Well, is it good to keep it up if we wanna refer back or would we like to um, look at each other's faces for a little bit? Kyle, this is Angel Hall. I have a question about the vinyl installation. Can we, like, um, I, what kind of inspired me was the, uh, looks like the flowers. Can mm. we embed things, flat things into the vinyl? Is that allowed? Um, so your question was, can we, can you embed other materials into the vinyl? Mm -hmm. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, the question I have not considered before. Um, we have done that, but uh, doesn't mean we can't. We had a a project 20, 2020 where we had an artist had special her, her artwork was um, special cut out film of different colors and shapes and sizes. And she had that installed on a streetcar glass stop. 
and then clear vinyl was put over that mm -hmm. to protect the pieces so that it wouldn't, you know, get damaged or anything. Um, but I mean, obviously you saw with those sound shapes, it's a, you know, that was embedded on the streetcar stop. So um, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, we haven't done it, but it doesn't mean we can't do it. I, this is Lynn Meredith. I, I actually worked for a, I actually worked for a company that does vinyl. And um, depending on the thickness and the actual, you know, the medium of actually what's going under it, um, it affects the how the vinyl adheres to the window and or the glass. So it yeah. just really depends on how what it is and how thick it is. It, it's it's kind of possible, but a lot of vinyl people probably will gulp if you ask them um, mm -hmm. put some stuff underneath it yeah, you make a really good point it probably should be pretty flat right I, that's what i'm thinking something very flat probably no more than a millimeter thick um and a millimeter thick is probably even too thick maybe even half a millimeter or quarter millimeter thick but that's that's all i wanted to know is if there was um any limitations on what can't go on there other than, you know, obviously something that's polarizing. We don't want that, but uh, I do work in, in recycled materials made from drinking straws of all things. Um, this is Lynn again. Do you have the actual numbers of the larger and smaller um, streetcar stops with the frame? Do you have to actually have that number? Like, is there five of one and 10 of another or something like that? Well, how many there are? So there, so there are a total of 15 streetcar stops with shelters. Um, 13 of them are large, two of them are small. And we'll be selecting six to eight artists for this category this year. Okay, great, thank you. And in the application, there are also um, PDFs or JPEGs that you know, have the dimensions on the on the drawings of the shelters. Okay, thank you. I think we had some questions in the chat. Um, so, uh, are concept sketches acceptable for the proposal, or are we looking for final artwork at this point? I'm gonna I'm gonna let Ann take that. Yes. Well, it's a little hard to answer. Um, mm -hmm. I think concepts are would would be allowed more likely for the beyond the frame piece um, because you you might be you know creating something new. Um, the reason I hesitate on the two dimensional, if you present a concept, it can be harder for people to understand what the final piece looks like. So um, that, that would be my hesitation there. Um, but, you know, we certainly do accept them just, you know, just it's a matter of thinking of like, well, how will the, um, how will the panel consider them? And, and will they be able to understand what you're trying to achieve? Yeah, I think keeping in mind, you know, how best you can represent your proposed project is what you want to submit, right? So, um, yeah, <laughs> that sounds pretty gray and muddy, but <laughs> I'm just getting to the chat here. Someone asked about the online application. Um, we just use one that we, have created ourselves. So it's not cafe or, you know, an existing mm -hmm. um, application process. Um, hopefully you'll find it pretty easy to work with. You answer a few questions, upload examples of past work as JPEGs or PDFs. Um, that's how we, we like them submitted through that. And that reminds me, Anne, on our website, um, there's a lot of examples of previous year's artwork in all categories. I definitely recommend taking a little bit of time to poke around our website and sort of see what people have um, dreamed up in years past 
And then back to, um, I, forgot, I, I forgot who was speaking, but sort of making the vinyl printers gulp. <laughs> um, we're interested in your ideas, right? Like we can certainly ask questions of what, what is possible. Um, so, you know, I, I would say, especially with like that three-dimensional category, like give us your um, big ideas and then we'll see, you know, what's possible from there. And we don't know totally what's possible because we haven't, there's a lot of questions we haven't thought to ask over the years. I see Lisa's kind of asking about, you know, how, how can we attach things? And it, it is a bit of a trick because we need to be able to remove them after, you know, four to six months. So, um, you know, we've discovered some materials we know we can remove. Um, others we haven't discovered, but we're happy to discover them. One reason we left the frame off, like we, we did not encourage attaching things to the frame is that we have found that's a little more challenging to remove things from because it's painted. Um, but the glass and the, the concrete, um, those we found it's pretty easy to, you know, that we can remove things. Um, Saul is asking about how crucial it is to attend the events. Um, you know, we'd like you to be at some of them, one of them, um, you know, a few of them. It, it is part of it is about kind of, you know, working and connecting and meeting the other people and then connecting with the public. And, the, the project works better when, when, when the artists can attend um, everything, but we know that's hard, especially since we don't give you the, um, we don't have the dates, you know, for you to plan on those. So we know everybody can't attend everything, but we do encourage um, uh, people to, to attend. And, you know, maybe if you have a collaborator, the collaborator could attend, it might be one way to look at it if you're gonna be out of town. Um, Susan had a great question about the transparency or the opacity on um, on the streetcar on the streetcar stops, the artwork on the on the glass. She asked if there is um, does it have to be a continuous contiguous space like a border, or can it be like smaller areas or you know sporadic areas? And the question is uh, the answer is all of the above. You can. Mm -hmm just like these examples that um, Kyle is showing, you can have little windows in your pieces that um, offer, you know, clear space. Um, you could do cutouts into any words or text you have on there. Um, you can build in like, you know, little empty spaces. So it does not have to do, have to have a border. Um, so get super creative like this piece right now on the screen um, really worked with that. And those seem to be the, you know, the more interesting pieces too, like um, like adding those little windows in there. It, it's, it's, an, it's a different way to experience it, so. But and I wanted to point out too what Anne was talking about. So the blue frame is what we can't attach to, right, Anne? Correct. Right. Um, just to go along yeah. with that comment. <clears throat> yeah, so if you have ideas on the three-dimensional pieces where you think something could attach in a certain way, obviously put those in the proposal and um, if selected, we'll work through the process on what's the best method. But if you have ideas on, on how it could adhere to the stop or the adjacent area, please include that. Any other thoughts or questions from the room? I think Anne had mentioned that Art in a Loop will provide a lot of promotional and marketing assistance for selected artists. You also get that from the streetcar. We have a very, um, very vibrant social media scene and work a lot with the local media here in Kansas City. So you get two big organizations helping to push your artwork and um, you out there and um, telling your story. So 
Um, that's also a huge benefit. Yes, I see your hand raised. Is it Eugenia? I can't hear. Are you unmute, please? Mute. Oh, you've muted again. You oh. remuted. There we go. Hi. Hey. It's Eugenia. Um, Eugenia. I have a question. I'm not sure if it was answered or not. Is it possible to do multiple layers of the vinyl? the transparent vinyl? Like, could you put layers on top of layers? No, I know some Visibly, of I, I think that would be, I mean, we might move that to the three-dimensional hmm. proposal. I think we'd have to look at that, like how it's done. But I would say the one example, because um, the, the one that's sort of the, the within the frame proposal, that's, you know, that's a pretty strict will, you know, we print it, we install it, and, and we work with you on that. But if you're going to do layers, then you would probably be installing that yourself. Okay, I've done some uh, vinyl, I used to work with a company that did vinyl wrapping of cars and walls and lots of big projects. So um, that's what I was asking about maybe like different translucent vinyls, so that more mm -hmm. like the stained glass effect mm -hmm. that's what I was thinking yeah and that's the one we had one piece that kind of got in that direction two years ago um where Nazanin um and she installed she installed the the uh the vinyl herself in in order you know she had exactly the different types of vinyl that she wanted and then she cut it out in her patterns and we ended up putting a clear coat of vinyl over it just to Kind of protect it. Oh, okay. Perfect. That's what I was yeah. wanting to know. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is there a question in the chat? Um, you can submit more than one application, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's, yeah. And would we, pre would we prefer two separate applications or would you want to include both ideas within one? I can I tell you what I, my thoughts are that they should be separate applications so that they could be adjudicated separately. I agree. And, and that, yeah, and, you know, you could apply for the different categories or in the same category, but separate submissions. It would be clearer to make sure mm -hmm. we don't lose something. Easier for our panel to sort of navigate. Right. These are like really good questions today. <clears throat> My only question was how Kathy's soup coming. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna see? Do you wanna see? Yeah, a little. I'm really hungry for dinner. Party inspiration here. Oh my yeah. goodness. We're I coming over, hot. Kathy. Yeah. We're on our way. It's split pea soup, and, and I, that's the ham that's going to get cut up and put into it. It, <laughs> it had cooked, it had cooked with this. So why aren't, why aren't we having this at your house? <laughs> What a great Actually, example of some interactive and community engaging art that could be, right? A soup, you guys an are art in a loop totally soup party. Welcome. You're totally welcome. We've got a view over downtown, so it's appropriate. <laughs> I have a question concerning community engagement. Um, you had an illustration of somebody who you said had different events that occurred uh, during the time that, that her artwork was on display. Mm -hmm. Is there a requirement in terms of the number of events or whether this community engagement is for people of all ages or for children or for adults? or for teens, do you, do you have any thoughts on that? 
great question. Yeah, I I would say there's there there's not a requirement um, on on any of those things that you just mentioned. I think we would just you know look to you and how you know what you propose. Prior to the pandemic, uh, community engagement for Art in the Loop was, uh, you know, one of the the given things that we did um, with the artists. Um, it changed in the last two years, um, but it's whatever you can dream it up to be. You know, is it once? Is it a recurring thing? You know, um, it doesn't matter. You think works in the budget, you know, mm -hmm. that's available too. My other question is this, does it have to take place at the location where the art is? For example, if, if I want to have an event that takes place in a park near the streetcar line or you know, close by or whatever, can I do that? Or am I restricted to the space where the art is? Um, I would say, you know, we, we would encourage the engagement to take place near the art, but, or near the streetcar line. Okay. There might be times when it's something that needs to be indoors, for instance, or, um, you know, think, I think we're flexible, but, you know, part of what we are doing is, you know, we want to get people out to, to see the work that's there too. Um, but we, there's flexibility with that. Okay. Just don't do it on the plaza. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're not no, there yet. Not yet. Not until the streetcar gets there. I, mean, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking that so much as I might need trees for this and there right. aren't very many mm. trees right on the streetcar line. Um, that is at Washington Square Park, maybe. And short of using utility poles, which might be frowned on, um, you know, trees would be the next best thing. So, okay. Yep. Yep. And there was another, um, thank you, Susan. That's a great question. And there was a question about, must they be new works of art? I created in 2022 and the answer is no. Like you can use a, an existing artwork as long as it ties into the theme. Um, and as we, you know, as you saw with that large graphite drawing by Brittany Noriega, that was a work that she created and then, you know, photographed that we used um, for the installation. So there are ways of um, utilizing existing work. Kyle, I think is going to hop off so he can have a short break before his 10th Zoom meeting of the day. <laughs> So thank you, Kyle, for joining That's, us. Thank you all for being here. Excited to see what you all come up with. We hope everyone applies. And I mean, we can hang out if there's a few more questions. Happy to do our best to answer them. I thank you guys for hosting this. This was really great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, if you think of any other questions after the fact, you can always email us. Find us on the Art in the Loop website. Okay. All right. Well, thank thanks, you. everyone. Thanks. All right, guys. Have a Good great night. night. Good night. Good night.